This video is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at itpro.tv. So when we begin with the idea of TCP here, we've got to know that what we have to have first before two computers can communicate is that they have to be willing to synchronize, mm -hmm. okay? So if they don't synchronize, they won't be able to talk. And so that is where TCP can, becomes important for us, is that we have to be totally synchronized before we begin to send transmissions uh, a, as we uh, start here. Yep. Now, yeah. what, is, what does Ronnie mean by synchronized, mm -hmm. right? What he's saying is, if we start sending data between one computer and another, we need some kind of a system to verify that it gets right. there. And the, the example I use is like the postal service. Mm -hmm. If I write a letter and I, I put my, my return address on there and I put Ronnie's mm -hmm. address in there and I stick it in the mailbox, I can hope that the mailman gets it there, right? right? But mail sometimes gets lost, we don't really know, right. okay? So I can either just hope that it gets there or I can pay a little bit extra and do, what is it, certified mail yeah, or whatever it's called? Registered receipt yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, where you get a little return receipt. So mm -hmm. when the mail gets delivered to Ronnie, the postman brings me back a note and I know it got there. Right. Well, most of our communications on a network are like that. We need mm -hmm. to know that they got there, not just hope, we need to know. So we use TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol. It has that kind of uh, uh, return notification yeah. or, or whatever. Acknowledgement. That yeah, lets us know it got to the other side. So that's what Ronnie's talking mm -hmm. about with synchronization. When two computers are about to talk, they've got to agree to use TCP, mm -hmm. and then they start verifying that they are acknowledging that they received each other's communications. Yeah. And so with TCP, it's very important because, like, uh, like what we said a little bit earlier, the majority of our communications between computers uses TCP here, okay? And so as we take a look at that, we want to talk a little bit about the idea of how we establish the initial process of that, and it's called the TCP handshake process here. Yep. So when we do a TCP handshake, basically what happens is we have two computers, mm -hmm. and they want to talk to each right. other, right? So one computer reaches out to the other, and they, they do a, a broadcast or whatever. They, they do whatever it is to find that other right. computer on the network, right? And that might be a DNS lookup or something else of that nature. Mm -hmm. Once they find it, they send the first message over to that computer. Mm -hmm. And that first message going over to the other side is a TCP SYN request, right? right. SYN is S-Y-N, and it's short for synchronize. Right. And so once the receiving computer gets that synchronization packet, okay, they do something a little bit stranger in the process here. They receive the synchronization, and then it actually lets them say, hey, I also want to synchronize with the computer that I just got that uh, SYN packet from, and then they also send back what we call an acknowledgement. So that second step in the process for us is what we call the idea of the SYN slash ACK. And so we actually end up saying, hey, I want to acknowledge that the first computer sent me something, and I also want to begin my synchronization with that other computer. Mm -hmm. And that's a, you know, that's a pretty important right. step, right? We need to, to do a, a, a handshake both mm -hmm. ways, basically. Yep. So, so we start off with that synchronize. Right. The other side responds back with a SYN ACK, a synchronize and acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. And then the first side responds back with a SYN ACK, you know, or not a SYN ACK, just, just an ACK, ACK at that mm -hmm. point, acknowledging. And at that point, both sides have acknowledged. So uh, I, I'm trying fervently yeah. <laughs> here in the background to draw just a, a, a picture kind of of this process, right? And so the, the way it works, and let me move to some you know, bigger lines here so this is a little easier to see. So basically, PC1 wants to talk to PC2. Mm -hmm. So it's going to start off by sending that SYN message over to the other side, right? A synchronized mm -hmm. saying, hey, I'm ready to talk to you. Let's get down to business, yep. OK? And then the other side, PC2, is going to respond back. And it's responding back with that SYN ACK, which mm -hmm. I've conveniently placed right on top <laughs> of the line. So let me just move that there. OK, a SYN ACK, mm -hmm. all right? And once PC1 receives that, it then responds back with its own acknowledgment, just like Ronnie said, and completes that process, all right? This process is called the TCP handshake, mm -hmm. and it happens every time two computers go to communicate using TCP. Now, that means computers on the same network or computers on different networks, right? This could right. be me talking to the Amazon.com web servers mm -hmm. or, or me talking to uh, a, a computer like Ronnie's laptop right here beside me. Right. It, it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know, the whole overall process, what it's supposed to help us to do here is to guarantee that the other side will be able to get the actual data that we sent across. So TCP is also generically known as guaranteed delivery as well. Mm -hmm. And so this is a big part of our processes, especially when we start getting computers to communicate yeah. across network. Yeah. Once the two sides have acknowledged, every time they send data, so, so then they're ready to talk, right? So right. PC1 starts to send data. Every time they send data, they put a little sequence number on there. Mm -hmm. And that sequence number, think of it as like a serial number, right. right? So here I am sending message number 500, all right? PC2 will receive number 500 and then respond back saying, yes, I got 500, send me 501. Mm -hmm. And then PC1 will send 501 and then 502, 503. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm getting a message back from PC2 saying, yes, I got 502, I got 503, mm -hmm. That acknowledgement, yep. If PC1 doesn't get a response right. back from PC2, then PC1 will assume, hey, PC2 must not have gotten it, mm -hmm. right? Or if PC2 sees a number get skipped, if it sees 501, 502, <laughs> 504, right. then PC2 can say, hey, wait a minute, I missed 503, right. can you retransmit? Mm -hmm. And PC1 will retransmit 503. Right. That's why we can call this guaranteed delivery. If we miss something, it just gets retransmitted and we get it in the end. Yeah, and so this is a great process for us to actually at least begin the understanding of getting our data across the network here. Mm -hmm. uh, are we ready to talk about UDP a little bit now, or do we want? Is there anything we well, might have missed here? Let's I'll see. see. I, you know, it, yeah. CompTIA doesn't dive too deeply right. into this stuff on the exam, but um, I do like to mention just a, a couple other mm -hmm. little things, right? Like. Um, like why we have all these different communications anyway. Oh, yeah. And one of the things we need to remember is that when you communicate over the network, you're building what's called a frame. A frame is, is a, a collection of your data and some headers and stuff that's going on in the network. The important thing to remember here is the frame can only be so big, big. Oh, and it, it's about yeah. 1,500 bytes, right. right? And 1,500 bytes is not a lot no. of data. So if you're sending a picture that is, you know, maybe it's a three megabit picture, well, that's a lot bigger than 1,500 bytes, and so that picture's going to have to be broken up into mm -hmm. multiple frames. And so TCP is really important because if we're breaking up a big picture into 100, 1,000 frames, right, mm -hmm. when that happens, how do we know they all got to the other side, right? right? So, so for the exam, don't worry about terms. If those of you that go yeah. on to study Network Plus, you'll hear about segments and frames right. and packets and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and that's all important. But on the A plus exam, they just want you to understand TCP gives us reliable communications, mm -hmm. or like what Ronnie called it, guaranteed delivery. You'll hear both of those phrases, yep. uh, and it allows us to know that not just one or some, <laughs> but all of our data made right. it to the other side. If it doesn't, we'll retransmit. Yeah. So this is a great process for us uh, as we begin here. So when mm -hmm. we take a look then at the other side of it, the mm -hmm. the flip side of that coin is yeah. UDP. UDP. So let me let me do a, another artistic representation. Yep. Uh, UDP for us, uh, like Don said, stands for User Datagram Protocol. Okay. And in User Datagram Protocol, unlike TCP, where we have to establish the initial handshake, we really don't. Uh, with UDP, mm -hmm. we uh, the, the terms have changed. It used to be called unreliable delivery or unreliable data delivery. Here today, they call it uh, what? What is that new term called? Best like, effort. Best effort. Yep. Uh, that's that's what the new term is called. And so this one doesn't require the two machines to have any synchronization uh, at the beginning of the transmission. And so as we take a look, uh, Don is going to get ready to uh, give us PC one and PC two here uh, in our diagram here. All right, Don. Okay. What do we have going on? So instead of doing a handshake, mm -hmm. UDP doesn't care about nope. that handshake stuff. It doesn't care about acknowledgments or SINs or SYNAX. It doesn't care about sequence numbers. If PC1 wants to send some UDP data to PC2, it's gonna send it, it just opens up the fire hose, <laughs> right? So data one, data two, data three, right? We still have that 1500 right. byte limit, right? So it takes our data and it breaks it up mm -hmm. into those 1500 byte frames and it just starts rocket firing them over to PC2, yep. okay? If PC2 gets them, great. Yeah. If PC2 doesn't, big deal. Yeah. We just keep going, right? Just shooting that data right along. Yep. So when we take a look at UDP here, okay, not every type of data <laughs> transmission that we have needs the TCP, right? Could so. you could you imagine if you use like UDP for email? No. Like, maybe yeah. it got there, yeah. maybe it didn't. You know, or maybe yeah. a portion of the email's yeah. there, who knows? Yeah. But some of them TCP is absolutely important, but some types of data, it's just not. 
So where is UDP useful? Let, yeah. me, let me give you some examples, right? Any kind of real-time streaming communication. For those of you guys right. watching the show live right now, <laughs> you're probably watching this via UDP, UDP. stream. I say probably, because if you're on an iPhone or whatever, things yeah. get all sorts of confusing. But, uh, uh, but more than likely, you're watching it on a UDP stream. Mm -hmm. If you're firing up Netflix and watching mm -hmm. that, if you are making a voice over IP phone call, yeah. a lot of those use UDP. You might ask yourself, wait a minute, Don, if I'm making a phone call, I want to make sure all my, my communication right. gets yeah. there. But think about what would happen <laughs> if I was in a phone call and a, you know, a, a frame got lost in communication, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if the other side had to request a retransmit, that's a pause. Mm -hmm. And then it retransmits and it moves on. Now, the phone call is kind of stuck in a time warp, right? right? I get a little delay as a result. And the more times that happens, the more delayed it gets. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're at the end of that phone call, it's like you're talking to a wartime correspondent yeah. in Afghanistan. <laughs> you know, you're like, so Ronnie, what, uh, what are conditions like out on the field? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so that's, uh, that's what it ends up yeah. being like. And you can see how annoying that would right. be. Um, what would be better is if we just skipped over that frame and moved right past it to the next one and continued on, yeah. right? Because then you would hear a little pop or, mm -hmm. or a little gap, but then it would pick right, right back up and go. And so we wouldn't lose the continuity in the way that we are streaming that data. Mm -hmm. So it really does help here. So remember that for us, TCP, guaranteed data delivery or reliable transport transmission, mm -hmm. UDP, best effort. I'm going to not remember that term even yeah. though I use it. Uh, and it uh, used to be called unreliable as well. Yep. Okay, it doesn't mean it's unreliable. It just <laughs> means that that we don't get an acknowledgement back. Uh, really right. Is what do we say? And, and we're not making those phrases nope. up either. That's how you'll <laughs> see it on the exam. Yep. Best effort, reliable transport. Right. Those are those are the things yep. that we need to remember. Uh, and that's really the difference between TCP right. and UDP.